I'm always, you know, trying to um, invest in, you know, wellness stuff for myself, you know, like, you know, buying home gym equipment or getting a sauna or something. And, you know, I realized that, you know, there's always something that somebody wants that they think they can't afford or for some reason just don't, you know, they're afraid to pull the trigger on. And I, you know, I, I like to guide them to pull, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I pull triggers. So I'm like, if you want something in life, let's figure out how to get it for you. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammond. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Tenacity is part of the reason you are where you are today. When you think about the journey it took you to get here, all the no's, all the challenges you overcame, you had to bring with you a dose of tenacity. Another way to look at that is the persistence to create something that people said might be impossible, to align people together around very difficult things, even through all of the challenges that we've all faced. And as a leader, you have to do your best, not only to be uh, persistent, but also to share with your employees about what persistence is. Today, we're going to talk about tenacity, specifically from the viewpoint of the leader's journey to create a company and grow fast. We have the co-founder of Hemper. It's a, a cannabis uh, appliances and, and all the paraphernalia that go with the cannabis market. Um, they're a subscription service. They have other products as well as they do, but they were in the ink list twice in the last few years, uh, 264 in 2019 and 604 in 2020. I share all this with you because Brian shares his journey of uh, all the no's he got to raise money, what that did for him as a leader. How does he connect with his people? The one powerful question that he shares that I really love, and I can't wait for you to figure out what that is. When you think about your own journey as a leader, you want to make sure that you continue to evolve and push beyond the current challenges you have. One of the things I'm best at is helping leaders see what's really right in front of them, even though they can't see it for themselves. My job is to be the executive coach to founders, CEOs, and their teams to activate more growth and to keep them growing over time. If you want to check out the free resources we have, go to genehammett.com. If you want to schedule a call with me, you can start your journey. Just go on my homepage and you'll find it right there, genehammett.com. When you think about your job as a leader, you want to make sure you continue to evolve. Now, here is the evolution and story of Brian Gerber. Brian, how are you? Good. How are you, Gene? I am fantastic. We're here to talk about your leadership and journey of fast growth. Tell us a little bit about Hemper. So Hemper... Uh, started in early 2015, uh, started the company about a week after we made my two co-founders graduated college. Uh, it was initially a direct-to-consumer subscription box uh, for uh, consumers in the cannabis industry. So anything related to paraphernalia, uh, you know, rolling papers, you know, bongs, glassware, odor eliminating products, things like that. And we put it into a convenient kit. Uh, and for about, at the time it was $29.99 and we delivered over $120 worth of value for that $29.99. And, and you said that's where it started. Is it dip, the business model different now? Yes, we've um, created a very interesting business uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, so initially it was this direct consumer subscription service. Uh, which uh, we kind of use the subscription box as a almost like a Trojan horse type of marketing tool for us. So we uh, started developing our own products uh, early on, like 2016. And what we do is, so we'll come up with a new, you know, call it a stoner gadget of some sort. And uh, we will, you know, pay for mold fees, create the product, and then we release it into the hemper box and we get back thousands of consumer feedback within seconds. <laughs> this community is very vocal. And so they basically tell us what they thought about the new product and whether or not we get you know, amazing feedback. We go back to our distribution partners and we start putting that in traditional retail. Or if we get kind of more negative feedback, we might take the product back, re-edit the tooling, and then re-release it with features. Uh, so that's one aspect of the company and then about two years ago we actually um so we're in the 
ancillary side of the cannabis industry. So we're non-plant touching. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of boom around the packaging industry and vape hardware and stuff like that. So, uh, but one niche market, which is uh, this thing called pre-rolled cones, which is basically, um, I actually have them right here. It's essentially a rolling paper wrapped around a filter tip in the shape of a cone, okay? And what we do is uh, we produce these in India uh, where RJ, one of the founders, uh, sits there for about, I'd say nine, 10 months out of the year. Uh, we operate seven facilities uh, and we produce about uh, 40 million pre-rolls per month for the cannabis market. And we sell those directly to packaging companies, processors, multi-state operators. Uh, we even produce for a lot of the big tobacco companies in the space as well. Uh, and that became a massive portion of our company over the last two years. Uh, so now we have a, two very rich, diverse revenue streams. We have this B to C direct to consumer. Um, you know, we're essentially almost like a, I call it like we're a Procter and Gamble, but for this side of the market. And uh, on the other side, we have this manufacturing arm that we're producing, you know, almost a billion pre-rolls a year. So as interesting as all this is for those of us that, uh, you know, on the outside of this cannabis industry, because we, we're watching that growth and probably a little bit, some of us are a little bit jealous, like I wish our product had that kind of demand. Uh, but we're not here to talk about cannabis and uh, products and, and cones and things like that. We're here to talk about how do you as a leader create a culture that is able to grow as fast as you have. So you've made the ink list two times in a row. You were 264, 604 last year. Um, what, what are the core elements of creating a business that's able to grow as fast as you, other than industry demand? Right, so I think one thing to sum it up is we like, first off, we like to call this a family business because that's what it's turned into. Uh, you know, we have people that have been with us for, you know, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. And these people, you know, are our family, right? Like we are, you know, I, I started this company with my two basically college, you know, random roommates. Um, and, you know, we've turned into literally blood brothers and there's nothing that, you know, when we cumulatively come together, there's no crisis that we can't figure out. There's no issues. There's no money problems, nothing. It's, it's, you know, we like to say the universe won't let us fail. And, you know, we have that same mentality when we, you know, bring in people into the company, you know, we say like, look, we don't want to, we want to invest in you. We want to make sure you're happy. You know, I have, you know, uh, monthly meetings with most of the uh, employees, um, you know, just checking in on everyone, making sure everyone's happy. If, you know, even things in, like I asked them a funny question in their personal life. I said, is there anything you haven't been able to purchase that you want? Right. And if someone says something to me, says, hey, I want a hot tub. I say, okay, let's figure it out. You know, maybe we can build in a bonus thing for you this year, or maybe we can do this. Uh, and, you know, we're just here. I'm, 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 I like to say I'm one of the most flexible founders. I say, you know, if you're crushing life, you know, there's, there's nothing I'm going to say no to, you know. Now, hold on for a second. Brian just talked about we're creating a family business here. You know, every company I know has this idea of creating a family business. And as you grow, that gets harder and harder to hold on to. So don't hold on to it so tight that you can't see that you have to evolve as a leader and as a CEO of your family culture. Now, when you know everyone by name, you can certainly have a family business. But when you add that hundredth person, maybe it's 200 where you start to, to break down and not know their names, not know who they really are at the personal level, then you can't have that family culture. And so you have to figure out how to keep evolving beyond that. The best thing you can do is to understand that it's coming and understand that you can evolve past it. So back to the interview with Brian. You know, Brian, I really appreciate you sharing that story with me. That question, did that something you came up with or did you did you kind of figure it out through some somewhere else? I, I think I came up with it. Um, I think it's, you know, I'm always, you know, trying to um, invest in, you know, wellness stuff for myself, you know, like, you know, buying home gym equipment or getting a sauna or something. And, you know, I realized that, you know, there's 
always something that somebody wants that they think they can't afford or for some reason just don't, you know, they're afraid to pull the trigger on. And I, you know, I, I like to guide them to pull, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I pull triggers. So I'm like, if you want something in life, let's figure out how to get it for you. Right. And I, and I always tell them, I'm like, guy, you got to manifest your destiny. Nobody's going to give you anything in life. And I do this constantly throughout the office. Like I'll, you know, if I'm talking to a big customer or something, you know, I'll, I'll just be like, I'll, I'll like show my creative director and be like, this is, you know, I, I just reached out to this guy as a new customer and he's like, oh, manifesting, I see, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it's just like you start talking about these things and you start realizing that it's way more attainable than, and it happens so much quicker than whether you're just sitting there in a corner being like, oh, I can't afford that. Or that person would never talk to me or, you know, you know, and I shoot out a million LinkedIn requests weekly and I get responses pretty quick, you know, so, you know, I want to get into dispensers. I hit up the you know, the product guy at Spencer's, he accepts my LinkedIn request. We're in communication with Spencer's now. It's like, that's the type of thing that I like to have with, you know, the guys here. It's like, if there's something in life that you want, let's figure out how to get it there, right? Whether it's material or whatever. Brian, let me ask you a question about this, because one of the things that we saw in our research to have you on the show is you have tenacity that is, is really at, a, at one of the highest levels I've ever seen. You were sharing with me that you had you were turned down how many times for to raise money for your business? At least three hundred investor calls over about I call it sixteen to eighteen months. So let me ask you a question on that specifically. You get told no, probably you get told maybe some. Um, most of these people don't mince with their words. They're like, I don't get it. It's not for us. I, and I get right. your industry probably gets turned down, but they took the meeting for some reason. So. How did you manage yourself and your own energy as you got told no so much? So I, one thing is that I never get discouraged. You know, just because someone doesn't see something or someone doesn't value something, that does not mean that it does not exist. And so one thing that I'd like to say is I'm probably one of the most persistent people that, you know, especially in this industry, you know, where there's a lot of, you know, we call them can of clowns. Um, but specifically on the, you know, investment side, you know, when you hear as a founder, like, oh, you don't know what you're doing or you're doing too much, or I don't get it. Like, what are you, you know, it's, it's that person's issue. And so beauty is within the, the eye of the beholder, right? Value similarly. So if someone doesn't see it, that's okay. There it's their loss. It's not yours. You don't want to work with that person regardless, Right. So, and you don't ever close bridges or, you know, anything like that. You just say, look, you know, right now is not the time, no problem. Do you want to, you know, follow back up or we can revisit this later? Um, so, you know, I think as a founder hearing, you know, people talk about my baby, like, oh, it's not what I think it is in my head. You know, I don't turn into this huge asshole. It's more of like, you know, hey, they just don't get it. That's cool. Let me move on to the next guy. And, you know, eventually, you know, and I've talked to all the, you know, funds in the cannabis industry and um, surprisingly, you know, uh, right now, most people are looking for non-plant touching entities, which is us. So uh, fortunately we got a, I went in for a meeting um, with uh, this uh, marketing agency called Talent Resources that's owned by a guy named Mike Heller. And Mike was like Lindsay Lohan's manager and Avril Lavigne's manager. And so he was this, you know, old Hollywood guy. And so we go in for a meeting just to talk about marketing stuff. And we bring in some of the products and they end up, you know, geeking out about all these little gadgets. And they're like, I love this. I love that. And so Mike goes, you need to meet my money guy. And so I'm like, okay, cool. You know, and I, I, a lot of people talk and a lot of people promise things and you never know what, what's going to come to fruition or not. So we come in next week for this meeting and um, we sit down with this guy named Greg Smith and uh, Greg's looking at the products. He's looking at the pitch and he was the first person out of this 300, you know, this 18 month run of raising money to ever say to me, I love what you're doing. I see the vision. How can I help accelerate it? And the conversation flipped. I wasn't pitching him. He was pitching me to come into my company. And that's when I knew they were the right person, the right group to bring in. So we got a good understanding of tenacity for you and, and the role that that's played in you building this company. How has it helped you create the pace of growth across the culture? Because it's not just you being uh, you know, persistent, it's, it's your people too. 
right? So how, how have you been able to impart persistence to them? So I think the idea of a, so, you know, kind of breaking it down, let's just take my sales guys as an example. So, um, you know, I tell my sales guys, you know, one, you can't get discouraged ever, right? The sales process is such an interesting thing because I believe that it's so relationship based and it's not really what you're selling or what your value prop is. It's who you're talking to and do you create a relationship with them or a connection with them? And do they genuinely want to talk to you, right? And if you can get that over the hump, then basically you can get them to buy anything from you, right? So I think that um, in terms of uh, our sales team, you know, it's not getting discouraged when someone tells you no, it's working around it, you know, finding something else out about the situation that you can leverage uh, on the customer service side, you know, um, going out of their way. And if customers call in and they're seriously complaining or seriously some issues going on with the order, just pick up the phone and call them, you know, just, just call them. People love to hear from people, you know, and um, that's a big one, I think, on the customer service side. And then on the product development side, you know, I tell the guys, look, not every product we come out is going to be a hit, right? It, it's just a ma it's just a fact. And whether or not we got to, you know, take the product back in and edit the tooling or the design or whatever it is, you know, don't get discouraged because we didn't sell a billion dollars worth of this one SKU in a day. That's not reality, you know, and I think, you know, people in the high growth um, startup culture, you know, think that, you know, just because we had one win, everything's a winner, right? That's not how it works. So I think that, you know, just keeping everybody, you know, in a positive mindset where, you know, we, I try not to talk about negative stuff. You know, we, we just try to keep everything very positive and keep everybody just, you know, morale super high. And I think that the persistence of, you know, one, you know, seeing everybody else get it done kind of creates the culture of like, I want to get it done too. Now, hold on for a second. Brian just talked about a positive mindset. Well, you probably think that you have a positive mindset and you probably do. You probably don't think about all the frustrations and the stressors that you have around you. It's not bad to think about those frustrations and stressors. In fact, I think it's actually pretty healthy for you to put a healthy amount of time and input into what is frustrating you, what is stressing you out. It's not negative to think about the negative, but if you dwell there, it absolutely can be very negative. But what do you do about these frustrations and stressors? Well, I recently put out some content and had a conversation with a client about some of the things that he was tolerating inside his own leadership and culture. And when, he, when I say tolerating, he's like, they're not that big a deal. They're just kind of things that I don't like the way they are going. And so he ignored them. Over time, he figured out he needed to tune in to some of those things that he's tolerating. Because when you think about the tolerations, they begin to suck energy away from you. And so tuning into them is just a chance to like, to, to really wrestle with them and say, is this a big enough deal to have a conversation with? What is that missing conversation? And there's probably a lot of things out there that you're ignoring that need a missing conversation. It's all they need. They don't need you to do anything about it or solve it. But you have a conversation that allows someone else on your team to solve it for you or for the company. Back to the interview with Brian. Brian, when you think about your journey as a leader, um, what's a mistake that you kind of can look back on and say, you know, that was something I really had to learn from. I think one of my issues as a leader is that I have a very sink or swim mentality, right? You know, nothing's handed to you. You got to go get it and you can't be babied. And if you have to sit there and baby somebody, you know, they're probably not the right person for the position, right? You shouldn't be micromanaging people all the time, right? You should have faith in the ability that your team can execute and you can sit there and run, you know, the higher levels day-to-day -day stuff, right? So I think for me, um, you know, being more available to the team, you know, when people need it, um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I tell, you know, the certain, you know, I tell the team, you know, during the day, think of me like you're Google, right? Just type in a question, type in a comment, you know, ask me anything, complete open door policy. And I try to really drive that home where it's like, look, you're not bothering me. And I think a lot of people think that they are bothering me. And genuinely, I try to really say like, no guys, like I trust me. I, everyone's got a million things going on. It's not bothersome. I want to hear from you. I want to understand if you're not happy. I want to understand if you think we should change a process or a system, 
And, you know, I really tried, you know, creating this open door policy. And also, I think another thing for me is uh, giving praise. Um, you know, I, I come from this like, oh, you should just do it. Right. But I think a lot of people genuinely need to hear like, you know, either whether it's from me or from someone from the executive team, like, you know, great job. Like that was awesome. Like good shit, you know, and I definitely need to get better at that as well. Um, I, I think that, you know, I don't do it enough, you know, but I, I like to say I give credit where credit's due, but it, it's kind of this constant battle between the sink or swim mentality and giving praise where I think it should just be automatic right? It's, you're just doing your job, you know? Yeah. So I, I think I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about that, you know, why would we praise someone for just doing their job? But what you probably figured out is it's pretty easy to say, you know, that you did a great job here and the smile you get from someone and the confidence that gives them probably goes a long yeah. way. Yeah. It may not be something you need, but maybe they need it. You probably had to learn yeah. that as well. So I want to totally. give you one more chance here, you know, as the company's grown fast, um, we've been talking about tenacity and persistence and, and talking about, you know, the people being so important. What else do you think plays a final, you know, a big role in the growth of your company? I think that, you know, one thing that plays a massive role in the growth is, you know, and tying it back to the tenacity and persistence is just never giving up. You know, and I think that, that this, I, you know, we we're talking earlier about the millennial, you know, founder of mentality. It's that, constant hustle it's that it's 24 7 you know and it's the idea of like people want something to belong to or care about you know what i think and i think that's missing in a lot of people's lives and fortunately for us you know especially during this whole pandemic situation we didn't lay off anyone we were hiring the entire time and I think that, you know, not having to worry about that, you know, being laid off or furloughing yourself or, you know, not taking a cut and having that security and understanding that going back to the, this is a family business and we take care of our people, whether they need it in their personal life or whether they need it in a professional life. Uh, I think it's just creating that mindset of like, these people care about me. I'm not a number and I want to deliver for them. And I want to deliver for my peers. And I think that that's been a major role in the growth. And I think that, you know, coupling that with, you know, we're just all young and we want to make it in life and we're all kind of figuring it out together. And as kind of, you know, I was telling you earlier, it's like, you know, I'm one of the, I'm probably, I'm the second, you know, the oldest, one of the oldest people at the company at 29. And most of my guys are 25, 26, 24, 23, 22. And, you know, while they're looking at me to figure out life, I'm there guiding them through life. And I think that they feel, we both feel, I guess, a sort of, it's almost like comforting knowing that we're all figuring it out together and nobody's higher than the other person and nobody's more important than the other guy. And just knowing that it's, we got you, you know, and I think that's really what it is. Well, Brian, Really want to appreciate you being here, sharing your journey of leadership and growth of a company like Hemper, who has made a, its mark, continues to, to grow beyond where it is today. Thanks for sharing the, that piece of us with this audience at Growth Think Tank. Totally. Thank you so much for having me. So let me wrap this up for you guys tuning in here. Thank you for listening to you know, these stories of leadership and growth. Being persistent is something that we all must be able to attach to and, and really a healthy um, respect for not giving a damn in the world uh, probably is a really good thing if you wanna make your dent in the world. And if you're a leader that is pushing the boundaries of your own growth, you're ready to evolve to a new level, make sure you check out the free content at genehammett.com. We've got free resources for you. We've got some trainings that were absolutely free, but if you want to get on the phone with me, you can actually schedule that for no cost. Just get on the call with me at genehammett.com and you'll start your journey to a higher level of growth within your company. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.